Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, and in this video I'm gonna show you how I sharpen my hand plane blades. Now I'm in the middle of a restoration video right now, and I decided to stop and make a separate video specifically on sharpening because it requires a little more detail. I don't wanna spread that other video out too far. So if you're interested in seeing the full restoration of this number five hand plane, make sure you click the card up here, and it'll pause this video and go watch that video and come back to it or watch it at whatever time. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna talk about a little bit on my sharpening equipment. When I first started, and what I recommend for other people when you're getting into sharpening hand tools, uh, whether it's chisels or your hand planes, is to start with just some sandpaper. It's much more affordable. Unfortunately, getting good sharpening equipment kind of is a little bit pricey. It's something that I would recommend uh, you're gonna to have to get eventually. It's really, really important if you wanna do hand tool work keep your stuff sharp, you know, use them almost daily. But when you're just starting out and on a budget and you can't afford all this stuff, you can still get your tools sharp and there's a way to do it. So sandpaper really is the method. And what I have here is a piece of float glass. Now that's different than plate glass. The process in which float glass is made is they float melted glass on melted tin, molten tin or sometimes molten lead. And because it's floating on that molten metal it creates a perfectly flat surface and that's what you want so i'll start off um we'll go and we'll look at some of the sandpaper stuff i'll show you how to use that later on but i'm going to talk about what i have here when i first bought my my sharpening equipment i started off with some double-sided stones i wanted to get as much bang for my buck i got this 220 and 1000 grit norton stone and this 4,000 and 8,000 grit Norton stone. Now, this stone, the, the 220 side, I determined right away that it wasn't very good. It's really soft and it doesn't really abrade very fastly. The 1,000 grit is actually pretty good, but what I use this stone for nowadays is just flattening these stones. Now, they sell special lapping stones that are supposed to be used to flatten your regular water stones but I just use these two stones and I just rub them back and forth together and I do this pretty frequently in between sharpening so I don't let them dish too much and I just go back and forth and these stones have remained dead flat and I check them with my straight edge and they're definitely flat so you don't need a special flattening stone just use your other stone that's flat and make sure you're moving it around to keep a nice consistent wear on there now when I bought these, I also bought a coarse diamond stone. Now the reason I bought a coarse diamond stone was when I had like really heavy duty material to remove and then also shaping the outside edges of my plane blade. You wanna add either a full camber to the whole blade where it's kinda like this or, the, or flat across and then, you, and then you round the corners so that when you're planing you get this feathering effect on the edge of your plane blade, the stroke, so that you're not getting visible lines if it's a nice 90 degree edge. So that's what I got the diamond plate for. If you do, if you tilt your plane blade while you're sharpening on these softer wet stones, it'll gouge it. So that's what the steel is nice for, these diamond plates. Since I bought this, I went and got a extra course because this course is not that course <laughs> compared to the diamond stones. Um, it, it It's more like, a medium stone I would say. This extra course does pretty good at removing that heavy material like if my blade has a nick or something like that. Then I also bought an extra fine because what I wanted to do was kind of convert to all diamond. The water stones are a little more tedious and messy. You have to kind of pre-soak them. I like to soak them for about 10 minutes before I use them. If you leave them in the water the whole time they tend to kind of get a little too soft and if you don't soak them for at least 10 minutes then they, you know, they just don't work quite as well um, being saturated. So you kind of, it's kind of annoying having when you're ready to sharpen and you have to wait about 10 minutes to start sharpening. That's why I kind of wanted to go to the diamond stones so I could just spray them with whatever I use, whether if it's water or a lot of people use auto glass cleaner or simple green, different things like that. There's a bunch of debate on what's a great, a good lapping fluid. Um, typically I just use water and you can go right away and start so but I just really 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 
like this 4,000 to 8,000 stone. I still use it. Like I said, it's a little bit of a pain soaking it, but it just works extremely well. So that's why I continue to use this stone. So let's get into uh, sharpening. What I'm gonna do is I have this plain blade and I haven't touched it at all yet. I actually put it in some de-rusting WD-40 rust remover and that worked incredibly well. And looking at this blade, it's actually in relatively good shape. And the previous person actually put rounded corners on it so he knew what he was doing. So I'm gonna take this apart. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on making sure the back of this play, this blade is dead flat. So I'm gonna bring you in, I'm gonna start with the diamond stones and uh, do that process. So I'm gonna start with the coarse stone first. And these, no, these whole um, holders are what the water stones came in. And I actually really like them and that's pretty much just what I use. Um, you can make special jigs and this is my sharpening little block. Over here, there's numbers you can see. And when I start it with a fresh blade and I don't know who previously used it or, or every like six months or so, I'll pop it in this guide and I'll get my primary bevel established back to whether it's 25 or 30 or whatever. So what I'm gonna do first is starting with the coarse stone, I'm gonna check and see how flat we are on the back here. So I'll just put it on the side here. You only really need to worry about this last inch or so half an inch to an inch. So I'm flat kind of all the way across and there's some pitting that I want to get all the way down and remove that. Okay, now you can see I pretty much have a flat spot all the way across that leading edge. But I want to polish this, so I'm going to rinse this stone off. I'm going to my fine diamond stone. I'm gonna polish the back and I'll polish the cutting edge too because it's important to have two polished edges coming, meeting together. The finer the polish, the sharper the blade will be. Now there's obviously debate on how sharp is good enough and you definitely can cut with stuff that's uh, not nearly as sharp that I go to but it doesn't take me much longer to add a couple extra steps. And now I'm going to go to my water stones. And you only have to flatten the back like once or maybe you might want to touch it up every check on it once a year or something like that. But very, very infrequently do you have to do anything to the back. Just this first time to make sure it's flat and it's usually going to be pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna work on the cutting edge and I'm gonna show you how to do that using the glass. So that method I just showed you, you can do, you can flatten the back using the glass and sandpaper too. I'm gonna start, I have this roll of stick back paper that I found at a woodworking show. It was only $5 for the big roll of it. The paper wears pretty quick, but it's really nice that it's stick back. So it's, it's pretty coarse, like 120 grit. I have 150 grit roll too. And this is what I use if I have a deep nick or um, I'm flattening the bottom of a plane or something like that. So this is a new blade to me, so I'm not really sure what this angle is. What I'm gonna do is put it in this guide. These are super cheap. Get these for like $7. And over on my sharpening table here, I have, you can see these numbers. This side over here is for plane blades. Set my bevel to 25 degrees. So I wanted to bring you over here and kind of show you why I'm sharpening at 25 degrees before we go any farther. Giving you an explanation and my experience as to why I do a, a 25 degree primary bevel and not something else. So 25 degrees is just a good, you know, there's no set in stone number you have to do. But the reason I do 25 degrees is because after I establish my primary bevel, 
you know, this is when I get a new blade and I don't know what it was before, or this is like maybe every six months or every year I'll go and after I've used a blade for a really long time, I kind of want to get back to square one again. So I'll do 25 degrees, but then I, as I sharpen by hand, what happens is it creates a little bit of a concave in the blade and out here at the tip is, will end up around 30 degrees. And 30 degrees is kind of like that sweet spot number. It doesn't have to be 30 degrees. It doesn't need to be 25 degrees. You know, as long as you're not at like 45 degrees or 15 degrees, as long as you're kind of in between 25 and 35, it's going to be like a great angle for your blade so that it retains its edge. It doesn't, it's not too narrow where it deforms. It's not too blunt where it's hard to maintain a sharp edge. So 30 degrees is a nice sweet spot. So that's why I do, I start with 25 and when I hand sharpen, I end up with 30 and it'll stay like that. Every time I hand sharpen, I kind of get right there in that sweet spot. And as I'm sharpening, it'll stay right around 30 degrees. When I, I'd gone through a couple different versions of how I like to sharpen. At first I did a straight 30 degree angle and I tried to maintain that and I would use like the the honing guide to make sure I was there. But that's hard to maintain. It's a lot of extra work. You have to use your honing guide or your, uh, yeah, your, your honing guide every time you do it. Um, then I went and I was like, there's all this talk about secondary bevels and micro bevels. So I did that for a while. I did 25 degrees and then I would add the little tiny 30 degree micro bevel at the end. And then you just sharpen it again after that gets dull, moves up a little bit. Then you sharpen it again, then you sharpen it again. And after you do it about five or six times, then you might want to redo your primary bevel again. Again, just I don't think it's as good or as fast, you know, or any more effective than just sharpening by hand and letting there be a small concave. I've noticed zero difference in performance, but I've gained speed in doing it. It's a lot quicker. Don't have to worry about it. I'm telling you, I used to be really caught up in making, like thinking this edge was super, super important to be, you know, flat or exactly 30 degrees and it's not. So don't get caught up in that yourself. I would recommend learning how to hand sharpen um, and, you know, just use that and be happy with that and it's going to cut just fine. All right, back to sharpening. Cinch this guy down. And I'm just going to use this dry. First couple passes here. If you don't have float glass or can't find any, you can also go check your, if you have a table saw with a nice cast iron top, the table saw will often have a flat enough surface that you can use that. There you can see what we got right in the middle there a little bit. So I got some work to do on here. see pretty much reached all the way to the edge now and I'm starting to feel a burr which is what you want to feel because then you know you've totally reached the edge now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rocking the plane the blade a little bit while it's in this jig to feather those corners a little bit and I'll do like 10 on this side, 10 on that side. Now I'm going to switch to these wet dry sandpaper. You can get these at pretty much any of your big box stores. The stick back paper is harder to find. I can't find it. I haven't found it anywhere um, except for that one woodworking shop meat thing. But I'm sure you could very easily find it online. It's just harder to find in stores. So let's start with the 600 first. If you can't find stick back sandpaper, you can always use regular sandpaper and some spray adhesive to get it to stick. Put some water down. Put my paper on that. 
a little water on top. Okay, now I'm going to work on the corners. I'm just going to tilt it again and just pull back the side. Just barely lifting up a, maybe like an eighth of an inch. See, it's getting a really nice edge already just with 600. You definitely could probably stop right there and have a good blade. But we're gonna go up a little bit higher. I have 15 and 2,000. That's getting a really nice polished edge. Okay, I'm gonna feather the edges again. Now I'm just pressing on this corner, not lifting it at all. It has a really nice polished edge just with sandpaper. Now the final step for this blade would be to strap it, which I do on all my tools. Some people might not think it's necessary, but I always do it. You can make this strap. I bought this thing, it was really cheap, and uh, a leather strap is incredibly easy to, to make. So uh, just some polishing compound, and kind of just, you don't need this guide anymore. And I'm gonna show you here in a second how to sharpen freehand. Just find where your bevel is, and just start pulling backwards on it. And every so often, pressure on those corners. Maybe 20, 30, 40 strokes. Go to the back side, because you'll have a little burr there. You can start working that burr off. And one last trick. You can do it on your sandpaper, but since the camera's set up right here, same thing, is I'll use my, it's called the ruler trick. And essentially what you do is you put a very thin ruler on one edge of your sandpaper or sharpening stone, and you bring the blade to the other side, and essentially you'll be putting, polishing a little tiny micro back bevel on the flat side. It doesn't take much, you wanna be at the very, very far edge and it just really brings both those planes together and gives a really, really nice polished cutting edge. Get on the strap a couple times. Do a couple back and forth to break any wire edge. And then this blade is pretty darn sharp, let's see. You always gotta test, right? Hopefully this goes well, come on, zoom in. And that's pretty sharp. You can see it's shaving very easily. So just with sandpaper, probably $15, $20 worth of sandpaper, you can definitely get your planes absolutely flat and sharp enough to use. So Now I want to show you real quick what my normal sharpening process is on the day-to-day. -day. So that was the kind of initializing doing the first sharpening process. That takes a little bit more work, but when you're working on a day-to-day -day with these tools, you wanna to sharpen them before they get too dull. And if you do that, it only takes a little bit of time to tune them right back up. So typically, when I'm sharpening on my day-to-day, -day, uh, again, I'm always just quickly flattening, kind of turn the stones around, go all over on them to kind of make sure they both remain flat. And that's where this, uh, you can use the diamond stones too to keep this flat. But normally I don't even need to use anything except for my 4,000 and 6,000 and then restrap. So 
Pretend I've used this blade a little bit. I don't need the jig. I already kind of have my 25 degree angle. So I come over to my stone and you can kind of feel where it's flat, the back of it. Once you feel right there, then essentially you just, I kind of lock my body into place, leaning over the work, get everything locked into place. And then I just do circular motions. I like the circular motions. You can also do figure eights. They're, seem, they're a little bit harder to control. The circular motion for me is a really nice controlled pattern. And it's better than just going back and forth because here you're just, you're just cutting straight grooves in the metal. If you make a circular motion, the grooves are kind of like getting, they cut like back and forth across each other. I, I feel like it cuts a little bit faster that way. So this is even more time than I usually need to spend. So probably just up and down, back and forth, a couple times just like that. That would probably be all I would spend on that side. Flip it over to 8,000. Find that bevel. Kind of go up, come back down, and then I'll typically press on just the far corners. I don't do circles on the corners because they'll tend to gouge the softer wet stones. So that is why I'm only doing pull strokes. To feather that out. Grab my little ruler for my ruler trick. And this also removes any little bird that you've made and polishes that back bevel again. And then I just, a little bit on the strop. Backside. And now that plain blade is good to go again. And if I'm not talking and explaining, it's 30 seconds. So now we're gonna talk about the chip breaker or cap iron, some people call it. These are important to also sharpen and tune to your blade. If these aren't properly set up, then your plain blade's not gonna work as well. So we're gonna start off by, I'm gonna put these together. I'm gonna bring this up to where I normally would be using it. And then I'm gonna kind of look between the plane blade at some light and that cap iron. And I'm looking for any gaps. And then there's a big gap on this side and I'm gonna show it to you. So you can see on this side, there's no, hey Hoots. <laughs> and you can see on this side, there is no gap. And on this side, there is a gap. Now, when you put this in the plane and cinch down the lever cap, that'll squeeze this and essentially eliminate that. But we're going to flatten it anyway. When these two come together, you can see that they get pinched like that. And so you want the very leading edge here to be making really good contact with it. You don't want the heel in there, the back side of this. You don't want the inside touching and causing a gap. You want the very front leading edge. So when we essentially sharpen this, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna flatten it like this because then I'm gonna end up with the front edge of this gonna be too high and the heel will be touching it. So I'm gonna bring it back here, lower it, pass parallel, and give some strokes back and forth. Flat. We'll take a look. And I can see I'm getting polished here, but not over here. And this is the side that was showing that gap too. So that's a good sign. Once we take that out, we get that shine all the way across. We're gonna know we're gonna have a really good contact so that shavings can't get wedged between the blade and the chip breaker. So got some to go. 
Again, you can do this using the glass and the sandpaper over here. You just need to make sure your glass is next to the edge of the table so that you can have this below the surface. See on this, this side over here, it's not quite there yet. So now I'm going to put a, a little bit of a bevel on the leading edge of this chip breaker. I'm not going to go into a great bit of detail here as to why I'm doing this. I'm going to actually make another video on setting up a hand plane properly and how to adjust it to make it do general purpose work and also fine smoothing jobs. The way these planes were designed is so that you can set them in different configurations to make them do different jobs such as smoothing or general work. You know, you can even put in a really heavy cambered blade for scrubbing and then you can put in a, a nice flat blade like this, set the mouth properly, set the chip, break, the chip breaker properly and, and essentially turn the same plane into a nice fine smoothing plane. So I'm going to put this 50 degree bevel on the front edge of this around 50 degrees and there's a specific reason that I'm doing that and I'm going to talk about that in that other video on setting up a plane blade properly. But this edge where the chip will come and hit that and, and break that chip and roll that chip over is pretty important for this plane operating at its best. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Now I'm just gonna polish this front edge a little bit to reduce friction. Now I'll put the set screw in. Now the best way to attach the chip breaker to the plane iron is you slide the screw through the little hole here. Then you're gonna push your plane blade past where this will meet and slide these two together. If, if it's down here farther, you're gonna damage the blade as you slide them past each other. So now that it's on there parallel, I'm gonna slide this forward to whatever depth I want. Now when I get in my other video where I talk about setting up a plane blade, setting up a plane, fine tuning a plane, I'm gonna go into some detail as to different settings of this chip breaker and why they're important for different applications. So if you have a setting like this compared to a setting like that that you can barely even see, they have a huge difference on what the plane will do. So we'll talk about that in the next video, but essentially that's how you sharpen a plane blade. Well, I really hope you liked that video. I hope you learned something. I just wanna say this isn't the only way to sharpen. There's plenty of other people that do it plenty of other different ways that do just fine. This is just kind of the way that I've stumbled across and the way that I've developed that I like to do. So. Let me know down in the comments section what you like or some tips that you have for sharpening that you found very useful. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, please subscribe, hit that little bell icon. That'll make sure you're notified of all my other videos. So keep an eye out for the setting up the hand plane. That's gonna be coming out here in a little bit. If you're watching this video and it's been a week or so or more, the video is probably already up and I'll have a card for it here. Also watch the video on refinishing um, and restoring this plane that I'm using for this project. So all very good stuff. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.